My name is Bruno Lewaggi. I'm the CEO of iTech Software, and today I'm going to talk about the importance of standards in business. Now, before I go to my first real slide, I want to tell you an anecdote about a conference I've been to last year. It was the e-passport and EID conference in Berlin. And they were talking about these things, about identity cards. And so there's a standard for smart cards, and there's a standard way to read files on such a card. Unfortunately, the Belgian smart card doesn't follow that standard. And moreover, every different co country implemented their ID card in a different way. So uh, if you want to sign a document with a German EID or with an Italian EID or a Belgian EID, you need to write different uh, software. So my question to the panel was, how come, as a European Union, how come you didn't follow a standard? And the answer was very cynical, because not following a standard is a very lucrative business model. That was the answer that, that I was given. <laughs> now, uh, my, my, my card doesn't say CEO, it says evangelist. And I'm going to start with a biblical scene. It's a painting from Peter Bruegel the Elder, a Flemish painter. And it shows the King Nimrod back in the time where everybody spoke the same language. And King Nimrod said, hey, we people, we are really powerful and mighty, we are going to build a tower that reaches into the sky, that reaches to heaven, so that we can show God that we're really powerful. So God looked down on, on, on Babel, and he said, hey, this isn't going to happen. And what did God do? He gave everybody a different language, so that the carpenter wouldn't understand the mason, and the mason wouldn't understand the people, the sailor bringing the stones. So what happened was, before the the, the tower was even built, it was already in ruined, ruins because nobody understood each other. And so this is my intro to standards. Standards are about speaking the same language and not being able to understand each other is a punishment. It's not a, it's not a business model. Now, this is a slide I borrowed from uh, Leonard Rosenthal and I'm not going to go into much detail. So this morning we heard that uh, Adobe released the first PDF specification in 93 and PDF was ratified as a, a, an ISO standard in 2008. It wasn't the first standard, the first ISO standard for PDF. We had PDF X in 2001, PDF A, now we have PDF E, PDF VT, VT PDF UA. And we have some other interesting specs coming up, namely a, a spec for XFDF, it's not finished yet, ECMAScript and PADES. In my, in my talk, I'm going to highlight three different standards. The first one being PDF UA, uh, uh, the standard for universal accessibility. Now, I'm going to start with an example. If I would ask you all to shut your eyes and I would read this text, worksheet four, capacity, uh, interview, and so on, as you are humans, you would understand that there's structure in this document. You would understand that the first thing I say is a title and then because I say step one, step, th step two, step three, you would know I'm, having, I'm, I'm give, giving you list items and these list items have labels and these list items have content. Now, for a, you can understand this because you're human. For a machine, it's more difficult to see this structure. So what we are going to do is we are going to add this structure to the document so that the machine can understand it, so that the machine can read the document. Why is this important? It's important because a when a machine can read it, it can be used with assistive technology so that blind people, the visually impaired, can understand the d what the document is about. Now, maybe you say, hey, but we don't need this. We don't need this structure. So I'm going to give you another example. This is a spider uh, chart. Now, if I would read this out loud, for starters, I wouldn't know where to start. So this represents a number of properties and a number of uh, qualities. And there's one line that says, this is the score you should have if you want a job. And the other line says, this is the score that a single person had when he did an assessment. Now, first thing that you see is, with a, where do I start to read? For instance, I start reading risk MGT. So risk management, that's an abbreviation. So if I read it out loud, I have to uh, elaborate on MGTS management and then I would have to interpret this course now if I would be colorblind or if this slide would have been shown in the other room you wouldn't see the difference between the blue line and the purple line because 
yeah, uh, some some uh, projectors don't project that, and if you're colorblind, maybe there are even people who have a hard time seeing which line is which. So, what we would do if we create a PDF UA, we will add extra information to the document. We will still show the spider chart because it's an interesting graphical representation of data, but we will resolve abbreviations. So, MGT Info Business Decisions Support. We will. Uh, resolve this abbreviation and we'll say, we'll say management instead of MGT. We'll make the, the info color independent. So for instance, we say, we'll say, hey, this person value for functional leadership is two and he needed three. And we'll make a decision about what goes into rows and what goes into columns. I intentionally made this table this way because that's probably not how we are going to read this table. We are probably going to read this table this way. So first standard I wanted to talk about is PDFA, so PDFA to the rescue. Let's agree on a standard way to store and interpret documents. So PDF UA is technical specification. It's intended for developers implementing writing and processing software. When we write software, we are unambiguously going to say, this is how the document needs to be interpreted. It provides definitive terms and requirements to allow people with or without disabilities the same rights. Whoever reads this document, if it's a machine, if it's uh, a person who can see, who can't see, they should interpret the document the same way and, and should get the same information. And so if you have the appropriate software, then uh, conformance with PDF UA ensures accessibility for people with disabilities who use assistive technology as screen, such as screen readers, screen magnifiers, joysticks, and other technologies. So. This is, in, in, in a nutshell, what PDF UA is about, making our documents in a way that they are accessible. The second standard I want to kind of introduce is PADES. It's not an ISO standard. It's uh, created by the uh, European uh, Technical Standards Institute. And it's more or less kind of the same thing that was in the previous speech by uh, uh, Tim Sullivan. So I'm going to give you three reasons why PADES is important. Meet Eddie Harens, it's a Belgian guy, and he was construct constructing his house, and he got bills from his contractor, and as he knew his contractor, he paid those bills. But one of those bills were 30,000 euros, about 40K in dollar. One of these invoices was intercepted, and the wiring information was changed. Now, Eddie Harens Re recognized the letterhead, recognized the contractor, and he just gave his bank instructions, wire 30,000 euros to this, uh, to this account. But then the contractor said, hey, you haven't paid me. So what happened was, and the bank didn't want to pay uh, the feedback because, so slachtoffer kreeg zijn help niet terug, because the bank said, hey, we did everything the correct way. You just gave us the wrong wiring information. So. So uh, problem number one that we want to solve is integrity. Now, I'm an evangelist, so an another biblical scene, well, not from the Bible, but um, here you see Saint Sylvester, a pope. You, you know him from New, Year New, Year's e New Year's Eve. Now, in this icon, you see Emperor Constantine uh, I, who gave the deeds to the city of Rome and to the Western uh, Roman Empire to the pope. The pope got the power over Rome. And that's supposed to have happened in the 4th century. Now, this deed was used in the 10th century, in the 11th century, in the 12th century for political reasons, where the Pope could say, hey, I'm, I'm in charge here because the Emperor Constantine gave us the deed. Now, only in the 15th century, it was discovered that the deed, the actual deed, was forged and was produced in the 8th century. So the second problem we want to solve is authenticity. We want to know if... President Obama signs a document. We want to know that it was really President Obama who signed it. And maybe we also want to have some certainty about the date that it was signed. Here, in this case, a document was alleged to be given in the 4th century, where it was actually written in the 8th century. So that's the second problem that we want to solve. The third problem is non-repudiation. So this is Bart Simpson. We all know he's always full of mischief. And he couldn't resist uh, wet uh, concrete, so he put his name into the concrete. And as always, Bart Simpson says, hey, I didn't do it. But in this case, he can't uh, deny it because we see the shadow of March's hair. So March is standing back uh, uh, 
after, uh, uh, besides him. And March, March can testify that Bart actually wrote his name in the wet concrete. Now, what we need for signatures is a standard vendor independent way to ensure document integri integrity, authentication, and non repudiation. Not some solution by company X. And then when you consult the, the document with uh, a solution from company Y, you can't test all this. Now we, we want a standard to do this. And so here you see a document that has been signed by four people, by Alice, Bob, Carol, and uh, Dave. And it has been signed sequentially in a workflow. And for instance, Carol's signature locked a field where it says read and approved by Carol. When she signed, this field was locked. Now afterwards, Chuck changed the document. And you can see that uh, because Chuck changed, so you see a line there, well, I'm going to show it, changed by Chuck. So this line changed by Chuck was locked by Carol's signature. And because Chuck changed it, Carol's signature was invalidated. So you see a red cross there. And then uh, the document was locked by the fourth signature, so Dave locked the, sig the, the, the document. And because Chuck changed one field there, the, uh, Dave's signature is also invalidated. So this is an example of how the ISO specification for, or the PADES specification for digital signatures ensures that uh, you, when you receive a document that you can test if its uh, integrity is OK, the authentication from the, who, who has signed it, you know, and people who have signed, they can't uh, say, hey, we didn't sign it. Now, all of this is already in ISO 30 2001, uh, based on PDF uh, 1.7. Now, why did Etsy need an extra standard? Well, as Tim Sullivan said in the previous talk, there are several mechanisms used in digital signatures. You have hashing and encryption. And these these, me uh, these mechanisms, mechanisms, they age because computers get more powerful every day. These encryption algorithms can be broken. Um, uh, an encryption algorithm that exists for 10 years, some people have found flaws in it. So we need kind of updates for standards. Standards are living matter. And that's what Etsy did. They made uh, a, a new standard based, uh, composed of six parts. and you may say, hey, if standards change, why would, should we follow the standard? But, they, but uh, Etsy also solved another problem. So they also solved, solved long-term validation. So they provided a mechanism that helps you extend the life of a, a digital signature, even if the hashing algorithm and the encryption algorithm is outdated. So uh, PADES 1 is only an overview. PADES 2 is kind of what was already in ISO 30 2001. But this three is new and will be in ISO 30 2002 uh, due in 2016. So will PADES 4 be. PADES 5, it's a pity that Leonard isn't here, but that's a standard and I don't know anyone who uses it. So we've implemented it and we don't have any customers for it. And PADES 6 is more like guidelines about what should your signature your digital signature look about. Uh, Tim Sullivan talked about having uh, an image of a signature. So that's what PADES 6 is about. The next slide is about PDF A3 and Sukvert. Paying invoices is a pain. But what can be even more a pain is processing invoices. It's a cost. You can make errors. Uh, so how are we going to solve this? We need a standard. and. What if a vendor would provide us with an invoice that can be read by a human being? PDF or PDF A would be ideal. But not only a document or an invoice that can be read by a human being, but also by a machine. Then you know, we see that there are already some XML standards for invoicing, but then XML isn't that easy to read for a human being. What would it take to make sure that you don't have to do any manual work to input the amount to be paid, the sales tax. So we would like to have structured info, info in our invoice. And while we're at it, why not make the invoice in a way that it can be preserved for the long term? term? So why not use PDF A? So PDF A3 to the rescue. Let's agree on a standard way to archive documents. That's what PDF A is about. It's a standardized version of the portable document format. So it's a, a subset of ISO 32000. Well, PDF A2 is. Um, and 
PDF A2 says, well, all the attachments that we add to a PDF A2 document also need to be PDF A. PDF A3 is like an exact copy of PDF A2. They even copied the uh, typos and the errors because they wanted to, to make sure that people would say, see, hey, there's not that much difference. The main difference is that in PDF A3, you can also attach documents that aren't PDF A comp uh, uh, compliant. So you could add an email, you could add machine uh, readable data such as an XML file. So we would have, on the one side, we would have the PDF that is, can be read by a human with an attachment, an invoice XML, and this invoice would have structured data that follows a specific uh, schema, so an, a specific XSD, so that machines can uh, read this document. And that's, that's what Zugwert is about. It's uh, developed by a work group in Germany called Forum Elektronische Rechnung uh, Deutschland, VERT. It's based on PDF A3, so it builds on top of PDF A3, where you have the archiving part already taken care of in PDF A3, but you have an attachment, and the attachment is an XML file that imposes a specific uh, schema for the data added. So data can be extracted and processed without human intervention, speeding up the process, making the process less error prone because if you have to scan a document or type a document, I was in a hotel and I couldn't go on the internet because I used my last name, Luaji, but they had a scan and they, my name, according to them, was Luaj Le. So the I became an L. Uh, so yeah, errors like that happen. And it reduces the cost if everyone would start using Zugwert. And I think that, so Zugwert is a standard approved in Germany this year, so it's a very recent standard, but at some point it will become mandatory, I expect, in, in Germany, where uh, if you send or receive it, uh, an invoice in Germany, it should comply with the standard. So the conclusions. Why are standards important in business? Well, standards ensure clarity, as shown in the PDF UA case. Um, there's one way to interpret a spider chart diagram, for instance, and it's not ambiguous. Standards ensure security, as shown in the PADES use case. This Eddie Harens wouldn't have uh, paid this invoice to this wrong number if only he had had a signed PDF where he could see the green check mark instead of a red cross, but what he would have seen if uh, somebody forged the document. And standards ensure interoperability, as shown in the Zugwert use case, where if companies started Ex exchanging uh, invoices in a standard way, they could really save, save time and reduce the cost to, to process these uh, invoices. And of course, you've seen the umbrella. There are a lot of other standards, so standards ensure much more. Uh, and that's the takeaway of my talk.